he's brought you to a point where you've been detached to yesterday its success the crowns and the pains the failures all together he now says behold the word behold is a very powerful word behold means see with the eyes of your spirit behold means conceive as a reality what i want to tell you behold means let me have your rapt attention now that you have been distracted away from the mundanity of yesterday behold let me have your attention you want to understand what behold means you have to read the book of Acts that Peter and John were on their way to get beautiful at the hour of prayer the Bible says they saw a man who had who was seated there for a long time lame and the man was begging for arms let me show you what behold means and Peter said look on us let me have your attention and the Bible says Peter fastening his eyes on him said look on us Verse 5, now, and he gave heed. That's what it means to behold. He gave heed to them expecting to receive. He gave heed to them expecting to receive. To receive an instruction, to receive a blueprint, to receive a pathway. When he says behold, it means I need your attention, spirit, soul, and body. I'm about to deliver something to you that your destiny depends on. Behold. This is a prophetic word. There are many ways God tells us to behold. He will start showing you a certain dream within a certain season. It is him saying, behold, let me have your attention. You've been too distracted. But right now there is something that your ministry needs to do. There is something, there is a formula coming from heaven that spells your dominion for the next 10 years. Behold. Behold, God is speaking to someone. Behold, the next 10 years will not be like the last 10 years. Behold, have you received the prophetic blueprint for business? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for ministry? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for politics? Have you received the prophetic blueprint for that which God is doing in your family? Behold, behold means let me have your attention. For some of you, it's taken you two years to behold because one moment you want to focus and then you remember. Do you know that you can behold for a short time? He looked at Peter and Peter fastened his eyes on Jesus and he said, if it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. While he was focused, he kept walking. But the Bible says the waves, you would think because you are beholding, the waves should stop. They will still be there. But your ability to look away from them and onto Jesus. The waves and the vicissitudes of life have distracted people such that they stop beholding. The reason why he brought that dream last year was because he was trying to get your attention. Do you not know you are a great prophet? Do you not know you are a great apostle? Do you not know you are a great intercessor? Do you not know there is a kingdom financier within you? Do you not know that is a portion of God's program that has been committed to you? But God is calling you to behold. Do not play with this word. It takes a long time for God to get men's attention. Go and read your Bible. There are few men who God got their attention in a moment. For instance, you know how long it took God to negotiate with Abraham until he believed God finally? God had to invent a strategy to get Abraham to believe that he would become the father of nations. You would think just because he was Abraham, he believed. No, study and read your Bible. One night God had to call him and said, Abraham, count the stars. He tried counting and he lost count. Try again. He tried counting and he lost count. He said, the same way you have lost count, that is how your seed will be. And the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. You know how long it takes for God to get the attention of men? There are people who it will take decades for God to finally call them and say, do you know from age five, the dream you started having was me calling you and you are finally saying yes to me at 55. 50 years to behold. So don't you play with this word. When he says behold, he's not just saying use your optical eyes. It takes a level of focus that only God can give to look away from situations and circumstances. And to behold but there is a miracle in beholding one of the miracles is that as we behold him we are changed hmm. as we behold him we are changed please listen listen let your heart be open to understand what I'm teaching you tonight 
the challenge with many people and the reason why it looks like God is not doing so much with you is because you have not mastered the art of beholding. Beholding can take a long time. Beholding can take a long time. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that all that happened to the disciples for three and a half years was their ministry of beholding. They were beholding as they were being changed. Lecture after lecture. Beholding does not just mean see. Sometimes beholding can mean stop what you are doing now for the next five years. That is the price of beholding. Sometimes beholding can mean relocate to another city and remain there until I come to you. Beholding has a serious implication. It can mean suspend what you are doing for now. No matter how productive it is, there are few people who can behold. Is someone learning? Behold can, means, can mean that God can give you a, an instruction and say instead of giving 10% or 20% of all your earnings for the next one year, for you it is 80% every, there is something I want to teach you that will evolve you into the financial apostle that I'm programming you to become. Beholding is not just your ears. Beholding is not just your eyes. Beholding is your heart and your life. And because the Spirit of God does not struggle with man indefinitely, you have a choice to be so distracted that you distract his presence away from your life. He will respect you. He will honor you. But the danger is that you will be losing relevance to a season that is coming. Hallelujah. There are many sermons that have come out from beholding more than studying there are many songs that have come from beholding more than studying there are many mantles that have rested upon people what was the price to carry elijah's mantle if you can see me not if you can talk you become a talkative while i'm rising you will remain there and the prophets the sons of the prophets were talkatives but they did not know how to behold here was a man who said i need something a double portion he said ah my dear son you have asked a hard thing but if you can see me was he not looking at him and the bible says suddenly he saw a chariot of fire that came to carry him and he, he stood there focused while he was standing there the sons of the prophet were shouting distracting doing all kinds of things he he remained focused and that mantle fell upon him he said my father my father the chariots of uh, the chariots of of horsemen and the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof and that mantle fell upon him he carried it and went to the jordan and he said where is the lord god of elijah and he he, he struck the the mantle and the jordan parted hither and thither Proximity does not necessarily mean you are beholding. How many of you know that there are people who can be so worried their position is to look at you? Someone can literally be looking at you like this and that is a sign that he has left you because he's so distracted. He's just thinking, this fuel now, this issue now. And yet the person is looking at you and you will think that the person is looking at you, it means that he's giving you the attention. And the person is thinking of something far away from church. Behold. Ah, very powerful word. So remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Next instruction. Behold. Behold. See. Dedicate your life and your destiny. Be prepared to receive. Be prepared to understand. Be prepared to be engaged prophetically. And then the next instruction is I do a new thing. This is very, very powerful. I do a new thing. I do a new thing. He never said I will say a new thing. It says I will do a new thing. But let me tell you something about the way God operates. You know by now that God never does what you want or what you pray for. No, he does what you pray for that is consistent with what he has said. The only thing that moves the hand of God are his words. Genesis 21, 1. Do not forget this scripture for as long as you live. Let's read it together. Genesis 21, 1. 
one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken one more time and the Lord visited Sarah not just as she wanted he visits as he has said he does as he has spoken he visits as he has said he does as he has spoken so if your desire is not captured within his speaking there is no performance the performance of God in the life of a man is only possible when your desire is consistent with something he has said. The assignment of the power of God is to make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. To make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. To make his speakings manifest in the life of the believer. So when God says his power moves to honor what he has said so that there will be a performance, there will be a manifestation of those things that he has said are we together now this is why the word of god is your basis for receiving anything in the kingdom if you cannot find what god has said there is no basis for god's commitment towards you because he has submitted his reputation below he has exalted his word the bible says even above his office above his name you have to learn this so when he says i will do a new thing Another expression for it is that find out the things I have said I will do because it is what I have said that I will do. I refer you to my teaching, Exceeding Great and Precious Promises. There we considered how the, the rich deposit all of the systems of advantage that have been provided for the believer in Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. But you must know them whereby are given to us these great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. If you're together, shout a loud amen. amen. Behold, I do a new thing, a performance but you see, another word I want us to consider in that sentence is the word new. Everybody here, I presume, understands English. The word new means sometimes an unfamiliar path. Are we together now? New may not necessarily mean a repetition of something that has happened. New always suggests a virgin dimension. Something that you have never, is not captured in your memory of yesterday. That means there is a technique and a technology for approaching new things. Hallelujah. Behold, I do a new thing. The new, I wrote here, prophetic season before us demands three major things. If we want to see the new manifested in our lives, there is a prophetic season. An old season is wrapping up in our lives across the body of Christ and a new season is opening right before us but a new season requires three things number one discernment and flexibility to experience the new the first thing you need is discernment and flexibility please write it down discernment and flexibility your spirit and your mind that floodity of mind and thoughts is very important if you are to experience the new hallelujah in mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 give us 11 and 12 mark chapter 2 please now this was the man who was lame Jesus looks at him and says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into your house. Verse 12, the Bible says, and immediately he arose, he took up the bed and went forth before them all. In so much that they were all amazed and they glorified God saying, we never saw it in this fashion this is what it means to be new it comes in a fashion that you are not used to you will need discernment so that you don't call evil good just because god is not moving in a way he moved before does not mean he's not the one moving you see getting used to how god moved 
sometimes can limit you from discerning how he is moving now if you were there in my example again that i gave earlier on if you were there when the red sea parted every time you see a sea you start smiling especially if you have a rod in your hand except that the strategy for your victory at that point will not be the parting of the red sea how many people have remained before jordan for a long time look at the man in john chapter 5 i always make reference to this man the bible says he was lying down there for 38 years there was no man to help him sadly but jesus came to introduce to him that the way to be healed by the stirring of the water is only one there are many other strategies another strategy is when jesus comes to you your season has happened you don't have to wait for one year in his absence you can make do with whatever formula that is there but jesus is able to step in in one moment this is very powerful the principles of business diligently followed can prosper you with time it is true that that is a very a biblically recommended pathway but i submit to you by the authority of scripture that is not the only way when jesus comes he can change the dynamics of certain realities for instance by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow is not an economic principle but it is a principle that has has validity from scripture hmm. who am i speaking to ah yeah behold i do a new thing that means your life will be a wonder people will say this is the only way to make children great this is the only way to get land and build a house this is the only way to do ministry and yet god will be redirecting you through virgin paths that don't make sense except that the result will be exceptional you it will be in a way that people will say we have never seen it in this manner you have to be flexible listen you see this is the reason why in followership there are two dimensions number one follow them who have who through faith and patience have obtained the promise why do we follow them because of the advantage of experience there is a cyclical movement to life this is where age eldership and experience plays are we together even if you are Samuel who will be a great prophet, you will need Eli to help you interpret the voice of God because he has had it before. And God will usually speak to you using the voice of Eli. However, there are certain virgin moves of God that only happens when you look onto Jesus. That is another way to follow. There is follow them, but there is looking on to Jesus. Because there are times that he moves, both the old and the young stand at a loss because it is a path that has never been followed. Listen, if you are a prophetic person, discern what I am telling you. There are many, many people who, respectfully speaking, loyalty to how God moved yesterday is stopping them from aligning with how he is moving now. Hallelujah. Yes. It is true that he once spat on the ground and made spittle out of it but that is not the only way no many miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded here yours is for your hearts to be open that's why i love the the the, the, the rendition here they are songs of worship they said i will follow the lamb but they also said i will follow the lion do you know it's the same person so why are you mentioning two dimensions to the same person because the way the lion leads you is not the way the lamb will lead you although it is still the same person you don't have to stretch your ears to hear the lion the roar is loud enough but you will need dedication and concentration to hear the lamb speak i am meek and i am lowly there was a wind and the voice was not in the wind there was an earthquake and the voice was not in the earthquake and then after all of that there was a still small voice elijah what are you doing here but when fire was coming from heaven it was not silent it came in such a mighty way that it came and consumed everything ladies and gentlemen please hear me we need a generation of men and women who understand how to discern to discern, to discern. 
the bankruptcy of discernment has gotten many to a point where they are not flexible and they do not understand what God is doing it is true that you have never seen a child prophesy but one day your child of four years old can look at you and say daddy don't do business with that man go and pray for two hours and it does not make sense his age you are used to matured elderly people with ministerial pedigree speaking to you but God decides to use an earthen vessel that does not make sense and yet the most powerful prophetic instruction in your life may come from that child if you are a king and you are looking for a prophet and you ignore the slave girl you may never find the prophet you must know how to hear the king the prophet but you must also know how to hear the slave girl because sometimes it's the advice from the slave girl that connects you to Elisha are we together now say discernment one more time say discernment there are times that you are preparing to go and do business or go and do whatever and the Spirit of God constrains you and in that constraint watch this in that constraint something begins to happen to you watch what happens to you you begin to have a feeling go for a three-day fasting listen can I tell you sometimes it will it does not make sense to anybody including you Just the foolishness of obeying God you go and lock yourself first day nothing happens you just keep praying lord you asked me to come here second day nothing happens by the third day a veil that did not open for your grandfather a veil that did not open for your father that vista into the prophetic destiny of the family just opens and god says this is the reason why everybody has failed in your family this is the reason why people did not rise even though they were missionaries correct this adjust this step into this eternal covenant and this consecration and you will emerge out of nowhere and men who do not understand this thing will say from whence did you come we we do not know you in this fashion discernment you have been taught that businessmen don't pray they just think but the formula designed for your own advancement because of the field wherein you have found yourself you will pray as if you're a prayer warrior and yet you're a businessman it is a strategy for your victory flexibility 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 discernment the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what israel ought to do as a result the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command i always want to make reference respectfully speaking about 10 maybe 15 years or so ago the lord spoke to me i, I shared this with with every sense of responsibility and he told me that the next decade of the church as a den that it would not just be by sales of tapes and cds i remember and he said to take our audio materials as raw as it is and to put it in the internet through the social media platforms in their infancy not the best of production but he said my angel will take it to the nations and this is how i'll announce you the flexibility to do it for someone god is following an unusual path with you just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong did you hear what i said just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong this is a word for someone just because you are alone alone in prayer alone in giving alone in the sacrifice everybody has gotten a job except you just because you are alone they don't know what you are confronting there are age long altars that have vowed that nobody rises and god is submitting you do you know there are many things that god calls us to do that in doing them the benefit is beyond ourselves is you are looking through the loins of prophecy and you are seeing your children and your children's children and he's saying for their sake go on the fast for their sake build capacity Elijah you are a prophet but eat the journey is far you'd have no idea where you are going he ate a little and he slept he woke him again he said eat 
it means pray it means study it means get knowledge it means build the relationships now you don't know how far you are going you may not have the luxury of this man you are seeing now invest in relationships invest in prayer a time will come the demand of the nations upon you you will not even have time to stretch as much as you used to you will drink from the residue of your investment This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where my life is changed. Listen, I will share with you something to bless your heart. Do you know how I finally settled here in Abuja? For three years, God began to speak to me that the season, a dimension of my ministry and my work was coming to an end. And for three years, I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was just, I just kept praying that dissatisfaction. I loved Zaria with all my heart. I was used to that. I mean, people were coming literally from all over the world. It was at a point of ministry excellence and results like you have not seen. And yet God was saying, this is just a layer. There is another layer. Remember ye not the former things. You can like yesterday too much. You will lose tomorrow because of yesterday. Listen, I returned back from, I think, South Africa. Had a meeting in Lagos. COVID was just about to start. Now, Abuja has always been second home, but not for ministry. I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was, it was just perhaps maybe among my people to just go. But where I, it was just in my heart. I knew I was having visions. They were not yet clear. You don't, it does not become clear from the beginning. It is not an unusual experience you are having. That's how we all pass through it. Anybody who understands building prophetic destiny, anything that comes with clarity from beginning is a sign that you are in error. God will always demand faith. There is a sign to that vision that will be hidden. It's your commitment that will cause him to unravel it. God is a God that hides himself in light. He will give you an experience and hide it back to draw you. Moses, he sees a bush that is burning but not consumed and yet it does not have any sound and then he says, I will turn aside and see this great sight and when God saw that he now turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes. It's not about the burning bush. There is more but I needed to use it to get your attention. Hallelujah. Please play the strings for me. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you by the Spirit of God, I'm giving you a compass to navigate the days that are now before us because there will be a divergence. Respectfully speaking, you will find out that many, many lampstands will suddenly go down and then others from nowhere. Yet there are those that will remain burning because of the intelligence to discern and to navigate prophetic seasons. Just because you were greatly demanded of and for yesterday does not mean the demand will remain tomorrow. The sustainability of impact in the kingdom is predicated upon your ability to discern seasons. He made lights and those lights were for seasons and for years. Discernment. I remember I returned from Lagos and then I left for London. We were about the last set of people to leave London. As I came to Abuja, I think preparing to rush back to Zaria for a miracle service or somewhere, that was when they announced the lockdown, the global lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, that lockdown you see, that was it. Oh. I said, no, there has to be a reason. Lord, what am I going to do with myself now? If I had left, I was considering using another flight. I would have been trapped in London for three months, roaming around the streets of London. But then God brought me. And as soon as I came, I know that God is a God of purpose. And I just said, okay, my people, God bless you. 
when COVID is over, we'll have our time. It was that time. Finally, Lord, is it Abuja? Is it, is it just? Is it where? And I was praying and the spirit of prayer came upon me. And it was at that time I just saw the map of Abuja. I said, that is it. The Lord instructed me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. I got these four maps and I was praying like a madman. Do you have the discernment and the flexibility to receive the prophetic blueprint for the next level? Which venue would be used? That one is another story. Where the people will come from? That is another story. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. I began to pray, laying hands on those maps every day, praying. Lord, when you give the word, great is the company of them that publish it. I may not see the wind, I may not see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. Mine is to pray, mine is to prepare. The Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. Holy Spirit, this is what you are meant for. Now I yield myself to you. Direct the course of my life. When you see any man looking like a sign and a wonder, let me tell you, they have only learned how to move with the wind. The Bible says the wind blows where it listed you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming for somebody God can just call you you have been fasting for every day but that one day fast is where the blueprint of your destiny will be revealed but do you have the flexibility the flexibility the flexibility it was time to turn water to wine the Bible says the wine finished and then they came mary led them to jesus watch this and jesus said are you sure you really want new wine yes we want new wine embarrassment is imminent he said all right be ready to do what you've never done get six pots never has wine been formed that way no wine is formed through fermentation is that true and now he's using another formula and then they filled six pots he said fetch it don't taste it don't verify just be on your way the bible says as they went in shame what if nothing happened do you know they would have killed them at that point in a fierce embarrassment is there you now come and add to it but as they went in the foolishness of obedience a miracle began to happen the bible says when the rulers tasted it they said, ah, what is this? People bring their best wine at first. That means there is a kind of wine the church has not tasted. Ah, there is a kind, we, we thank God for our fathers. We thank God for generals, both in the Bible and in history. But I assure you by the authority of scripture, there is a kind of wine that must be tasted before his majesty returns. And there are men and women, ordinary men, ordinary psalmists, ordinary prophets, ordinary apostles, ordinary businessmen. Listen, we don't know how to make wine, but we know how to carry it. Ah, we can carry it to nations. We are not the ones making the wine, but we can carry the wine. We can carry the wine. We can carry it to nations. We can carry it across the globe. And no power in existence sustains what it takes to stop the transference of that wine. The wine is not from us. We are not manufacturers of wine. We only take it to the rulers of the earth. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want This is the place of encounter Do to me what you want This is the place where my life is changed Do to me what you want Hear me when you read john chapter 2 and verse 11 it leaves us with a powerful statement it says this beginning of miracles 
did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him what was the miracle to find ordinary men who started with water and then as they went the water turned to wine and they served the nations you would think the credit will go to the men of god i say it again every wine you taste that is unusual was not manufactured by joshua selman was not manufactured by koinonia the songs that you hear men and women like me Dunsin singing we don't manufacture them we only take them as and serve them to the nations the formula listen the formula when it has to do with working with God creativity is not required it is alignment and obedience it is when we have to do with invading the cosmos that is when we bring creativity when it has to do with God your creativity is not important it is your alignment and your obedience then when you receive from his presence you now add creativity to that which you have received hallelujah behold I do a new thing you want to navigate prophetic seasons in your life you must understand the power of the new the first key is discernment and flexibility let me give you the second very quickly the second key when you want to experience new things in your life is that you will need strength and courage strength and courage <laughs> Joshua chapter 1 please 5 to 7 strength and courage there is nobody who is able to explore virgin dimensions in the spirit and become men of power and stature when you do not understand strength and courage Joshua 1 5 to 7 1 5 to 7 one five to seven thank you there shall not any man be able to stand before thee speaking to joshua all the days of your life i hope you know he had never assumed leadership in this capacity the bible starts by saying moses my servant is dead get over it i love moses i use moses but that formula is dead good things can die it's not only evil that can die God is a God of evolution and transition as far as his work with the saints is concerned there are many good things he may need to shelve because there are greater things coming it is not only evil or bad things that are thrown aside as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake you verse 6 he says be strong he's speaking to a man who is about to assume enormous office a, 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 an office that would demand i mean the continuity the manifestation of prophecy depend on his leadership and yeah he's speaking to the people no idea of the battles that were before him and joshua was told to be strong and of a good courage for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance I hope you know the inheritance is talking about hard giants there and yet God did not even he was talking as if the giants were already dead share the inheritance which I swear unto the fathers to give you seven only be thou strong and if and very courageous be strong be very courageous can I tell you men who will understand navigate and excel as far as the prophetic shift that is happening is concerned are people who have strength strength and courage courage to stand alone courage to be controversial <clears throat> you cannot be agreeable and step into prophecy hallelujah he comes to meet a young lady minding her business preparing for her marriage and he says young lady you have found favor with God blessed are you among all women you would think after that blessing she should be announced she should be he called it favor I've studied Mary's life from that journey until Jesus I still don't know what is favor in that statement 
I understand giving birth to Jesus, but the controversies that surrounded Mary from that time, Joseph wanted to quietly leave her. She was about to lose her marriage, lose her life, and yet God calls that favor. So pain can be favor. There are moments that it does not look like it and yet God calls it favor. Be careful what you call what, what is happening to you. Ask God for the name to use for it because you can see pain that is a ladder for your ascendance and you call it pain but God calls it favor. You would see Jesus dying on the cross. You call that death but he calls that the path to victory. Today when we go to heaven, we don't just use crowns to know Jesus. Because there are men and elders who have crowns. But when everybody lifts his hand, the one who has the scar, that which was a, an emblem of shame, today is the symbol. That is, that is the signature of his majesty. When Jesus appeared, he, he said to Thomas's doubting, not by saying, look at my head. He said, put your hand. So the scars, the nails... You would have seen him three four days ago and you would have assumed that such a weak jesus the foolish man at the other side of the cross you heard what the guy was saying too and the other one rebuked him and said we are criminals here for a just reason this man has not done anything so don't call your lack of food it's not poverty it's not always poverty you may be calling it poverty god is calling it training training for where he's taking you so that you will learn how to abound you will learn how to do it plenty and with nothing are we together now believers must learn how to interpret the writings of the world from the lens of the spirit otherwise you will lose prophetic seasons because they do not come in an appearance that you are used to you need courage say courage you need strength yes the bible says by the strength of an ox is much good gotten the strength of an ox you see how an ox plows the field for hours yet it is making the ridges the strength of an ox is what you will need in this end time there are times you have to stand alone for many years before others join you there are times you have to see ahead of every other person maybe in your family maybe in your business and literally be there for a long time before people begin to join you one by one do you have the courage to be alone strength and courage psalm 27 1 and 3 1 to 3 psalm 27 we're looking at the second key. I like the psalmist. You know, I've told you this thing. This psalmist man, I really look forward to seeing him in heaven. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The man suffered too much till he became wise. Hallelujah. Do you know that his wisdom came on the strength of his scars? The psalmist. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Did the Bible not say, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise? It says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you need courage. In this seeker-friendly world, there are many, many times you will have to walk against the odds. People do not have to believe in you to succeed. No. We live in a world where everybody wants to be free of any, you just want to be accepted by everybody regardless. No, sir. The way of the kingdom is a narrow path. There are times you will have to take certain steps because of your conviction, because of courage. It may not be the best, but that may be the path a mark for your greatness. Hallelujah. Courage strength number three experiencing new dimensions demand obedience this is a serious one obedience king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god 
we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come again. Listen, there are some of you right now, you are beginning to enter very deep seasons. You are in a Kairos moment in your life. And it's not something that will just be for weeks. The Holy Spirit is going to hold your hand and lead you through dimensions. Sometimes you may not understand. I raise that song because I want to prophesy to you that you be strong in the midst of it. I charge you by the Spirit, be strong. You will pray alone many times. You will fast alone many times. The stage will not be there for men to give you the applause, but you need stamina and discipline. Stamina and discipline to build capacity. Hear me. You are building capacity for the days ahead. You are eating for the journey that is ahead. This is the word of the Lord to you. Build capacity. The Holy Ghost is going to hold your hands. He will draw you through realms and dimensions you have not seen. He said, call on me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. 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 Listen, there is a kind of warrior God is building. It's an arsenal that the world has not seen. There are hybrid spiritual combinations, grace upon grace. There are certain graces that were alone, but God is merging them with other graces because there is a kind of warrior he's building. Listen to what I'm telling you. Uh, you, you will look at them and wonder are you an apostle are you an a prophet we, we cannot describe what exactly you are there are hybrid combinations the hunger of people is driving them to touch graces they are touching graces the grace of an intercessor the grace of a financier the grace of a prophet the grace of an apostle the grace of a watchman and that hybrid combination is forming a very dangerous believer that God will be using as a battle axe in this end time. Listen, you see, before now, before now, there are certain pathways that when men see you following, they can almost predict. But right now, you see worshippers that you do not know. Are you a musician or a prophet or an apostle? Because there are hybrid spiritual combinations. That the hunger of men and the urgency of God's prophetic program is causing men to outsource graces. It's a dangerous spiritual combination. You will see men that are like armies. One man one man because of the abundance of the graces that they have captured hallelujah so you look at that man you are seeing a Benny Hinn, you are seeing a Reinhard Bonke, you are seeing a Catherine Kuhlman and you are saying what kind of believer are you who combined you like this the intelligence of the spirit ah. 
men who don't have the voice to sing but they can receive songs like ladders from the spirit and give it to the ministry of psalmistry and say sing us into higher realms sing us let us ascend the ladders that will open to us the vistas of the spirit listen do not be afraid you started your journey thinking you are only a businessman but now you've gone through the training of a psalmist you've gone through the training of an entrepreneur you are now in the training of a prophet you too you don't even know the name of what you will become he simply calls us witnesses because the nature of your assignment oh david a day will come it is your song that will come out from your spirit but don't just call me a musician because i sing there is still a prophet there and hiding behind the layer of the prophet there is still a king that is there Can I tell you, hear me, there are some of you, God dealt with you in certain ways, but he has never used the product of your growth. He kept it. In the future, you will revisit it. There was a time you were writing songs and it stopped and you think that that ministry has died. It has not died. God is only focusing on other trainings. A day will come, he will tell you, reach down to that weapon of psalmistry. Bring it out. I suspended it so that I would train you in the prophetic. Now that you have become a prophet with fire, bring out that weapon of psalmistry. Obedience. Obedience to scripture. Please listen. Obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions. Can I tell you? Prophetic seasons don't just demand discernment and flexibility they do not just demand strength and courage they demand obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions whatever he says to do do it the miracle of the wine is not just in your moving forward it's in your moving as he commanded i prophesied as i was commanded not as i wanted not as i wished the desires of many will lead them to perdition because they cannot submit their desire to the obedience of scripture or the obedience of the prophetic let me show you two scriptures number one is found in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5 you must be willing to receive and honor scripture and honor prophetic instructions and Simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all the night and have caught nothing he says nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net can I tell you prophetic instructions are powerful when they are guided and administered within the jurisdiction of scripture prophecy is able to rewrite the narrative every time seasons are about to open there is always a manifestation of the prophetic when it was time for the famine in Samaria to end the prophet Elisha came and with one decree by this time tomorrow everything the climate changed prophetic instructions is it the miracle of abundant supply in Samaria is it the miracle of the axe head in 2nd Kings chapter 1 to 7 6 1 to 7 the axe head that floated it was all through and by prophetic instructions is it the victory in the days of Jehoshaphat in 2nd Chronicles 21 to 30 all of them depend on obedience to prophetic instructions let me tell you what prophetic instructions are not number one it is not manipulating people to gratify self it is not manipulating people to gratify flesh that is not prophecy it's just the limitation of humans when they are not broken and are not aligned to God authentic genuine biblical prophetic instructions come as a scriptural instruction from God through his spirit are we together now 
and then through a human vessel to the people for instance declaring a fast it says sanctify yourself for in three days God will speak to you he will come to you reveal himself he will speak to you prophetic instructions if it be thou bid me come he said come the excellency of prophetic instructions is that if and when they are obeyed they always deliver because God is back of it he confirmed the words of his messengers he says hallelujah remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old now you understand that scripture behold I do a new thing I do a new thing in your life demands discernment and flexibility I do a new thing demands strength and courage I do a new thing demands that you obey that you learn to live by the Word of God it says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God 